Do you want to know how to bring the kingdom of God to people on the earth? It's got something to do with Psalm 100 in Matthew chapter 7. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have, maintain, and develop, and never-endingly pursue the close spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. Man, I wish I could take the excitement that's inside my spirit and just take a piece of it, you know, and just hand it to you and just put it inside you. God is moving right now. And the last few podcasts, I've been talking about how the Lord is doing supernatural things in my life. And he's moving in ministries all over the planet right now. It's an amazing thing to see. Right now, God is moving. And we've been seeing this wave coming for quite some time. And it's here. It's here. This morning on the way to, uh, to take Susan to school, my phone's inside my pocket. And Susan was there. The, the phone just inside my pocket. I wasn't touching it. Just started playing Psalm 100. <laughs> so my phone, I mean, my phone, is. It, it, Susan's seen this happen several times. It just started playing Psalm 100. So what I, what I did is I looked at the phone. I'm like, well, where's this file coming from? And it's coming from my Google Drive which I don't do. I mean, I have to I have to purposely go and find the file, download it and play it for that to happen. So, I was blown away and I thought, well, the Lord did that like twice. He flat out played my phone as I was in a really deep prayer or a very spiritual prayer, let's put it that way, last week after a prophetic dream uh, that Susan had. You know, i got to tell you, one of the things I've noticed is there's these waves that come, and sometimes there's just prophetic stuff that just happens. And then another wave that's happening is a lot of people are under attack right now. Kevin Reardon mentioned it, and then I'm like, all of a sudden, all I see is prayer requests. I even did a Facebook post. I'm like, why are we having all these prayer requests all of a sudden? Huge attacks. Uh, We were going out ministering Thursday. I even was, uh, you know, I I usually recognize these spiritual attacks where you get depressed, and you're like, wow, man, for some reason I don't seem to be having much victory. You know, I'm getting some warfare, but there's this determination that you're just going to do the will of the Lord anyway. It's like even though, um, for instance, even though Job was attacked in his body, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though they knew their body was to be burned, you know, Paul says, even if I give my body to be burned, like he was probably thinking of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when he said that, you're just going to do it anyway, because you know it's the right thing to do. And there's something even deeper down inside your spirit that will persevere and just do it anyway, in spite of the attacks, in spite of the, the apparent situation that you're losing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, this is a losing battle. Things are not rocking right now, you know, but deep down, there's this resonating congruency of, you know, it's the right thing to do. You know, so we went out and ministered Thursday 
with Joseph and his son, and all of them were being attacked. I'm like going, you know, we are not unaware of Satan's devices, man. He's going to throw temptation. He knows your weakness. You know, he's going to throw depression. Uh, headaches is a common one, you know. And it's it's just going to happen. So we went out and ministered. So these waves are coming, this prophetic stuff, like my phone's automatically playing, or I'm walking into the room and that very exact chapter is playing, or just getting words of knowledge. It's just like, wow, it's bubbling up. So today, as I was uh, taken to Susan's school, Psalm 100 played. And then last week, it was Matthew chapter 7. So I thought, you know, I was praying about it. I'm like, well, there's got to be something. God is, this wave of revelation, there's got to be something where they agree. Psalm 100 and Matthew 7, and something hit me. And I'm going to read both parts of it so you can see um, what I think is coming forth right now. It's really interesting. Psalm 100 is very short. It's a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Well, as I was reading that, it hit me that Matthew chapter 7 talks about a gate. Okay, we know that um, Jesus talks about ask, you know, ask, seek, and knock. Then he talks about how there's going to be good things that the Father he the Father will give you good things if you ask. He's not going to give you a serpent if you ask for a fish. Remember the loaves and fishes, you know? They got fishes, they didn't get serpents. But here we have a gate in Matthew 7:12. And this passage really affected me for a few years. It's one of my, you know, Susan and I were talking Matthew 7 seems to be really the thrust of my message, you know, we need to know Jesus, not just know about him. And starting here at Matthew 7:12, therefore, you know, he's doing this ask, seek and knock thing. And then he says, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And then he says, enter ye in at the straight gate. Now, if you've been following me for any length of time, you're going to know that I talk about that word straight. And one of the things that I bring to your attention is it is not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, and a lot of people just think it is. When you hear it, you think it's the word straight. You hear the phrase straight and narrow, right? And But when we dig into the Word of God here in the King James, it says straight is S-T-R-A-I-T. And a lot of people think, oh, that's misspelled or that's an old English way of spelling the word straight. No, it's not. It's a different word. (laughs) Straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, is stenos, the Greek 4728. It means narrow from obstacles standing close about. It's narrow from obstacles, right? So Jesus is saying, enter ye in at the gate that is narrow, with obstacles standing about. There's obstacles. Now, we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of heaven. Or actually, that verse is confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. That's Acts 14.22. So we are to exhort one another to continue in the faith. We need to encourage each other, people, because there is much tribulation to enter the kingdom of God. It's not easy. This is the S-T-R-A-I-T. Now, broad is the way. I don't know about you, but every time I hear the word broad is the way, I think of Broadway. And Broadway's famous for entertainment. People will fly to New York 
to see a Broadway show. You have reached your peak if you get your show on Broadway. But also, I think, of broad is the way. Broad, if straight is difficult, it's surrounded by obstacles, then broad kind of sounds like a slippery slope slide into hell. You know, it's just easy to do. It's broad. Everybody's doing it. And then it's like I see that picture of everybody just falling off the cliff into hell. And he says, many there be which go thereat. So I want to ask you, when you're reading your Bible, when you're prayerfully reading your Bible, and I was reading uh, George Mueller the other day, this man, he went from going from a sinner, right? I mean, he was a, a party animal, very deceptive. And then through his autobiography, and now we're reading a biography about him, you can see how his life is transformed. He goes from being a party animal, very deceptive, deceiving his own family, to to becoming to realize that he is destined to be with God, but he's slowly transformed by the renewing of his mind. And the more and more miracles he sees in his life, the more he gets excited about the things of God, and the more he presses in to the things of God. After a while, I start seeing that he starts reading his Bible on his knees. Do we do that? Man, I I started thinking, you know, that's right. We are before the King. I get it. That's pretty awesome. And look at the miracles this man had in his life. He would be down to like a penny. And he had many orphans, <laughs> many orphans in his care. And he wouldn't tell anybody about it. Maybe three or four people would know and they would pray. So just by looking at George Mueller's life, I can see that how he went from the Broadway where everybody's going, everybody's going that way. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going with the flow, if you're doing everything everybody else does, and there's no resistance, there might be a problem. And I'm going to tell you something else. When you're reading your Bible, and there's a spiritual resonance that says the Spirit of truth will guide us in all truth, there's a point where we, in our relationship with God, when we're entering into the kingdom of God, when we're entering into the kingdom of heaven, There's a spiritual component to our relationship to where our spirit man is wakened. It wakes up and it recognizes the father of spirits. Then once you have that relationship with the father of spirits, you know, God, our father who art in heaven, where in heaven, God is a spirit. Those who worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. You can't do it in the flesh. It's in spirit. So, If God is a spirit and those who worship him must do so in spirit and truth, well, then Psalm 100 gives us the key to that relationship. And I talk about this verse over the years. Enter into his gates. Now, notice there's gate in Psalm 100, and there's a gate in Matthew 7, 12 through 14. The gate's narrow. How do we enter into that gates? How do we enter into the gates of the Lord? With thanksgiving. Lord, I am thankful for everything you've given me. Lord, I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for just just get excited and start thanking the Lord. And then it says, enter into his courts with praise. Just start praising the Lord. it's It's like Ezekiel's river, man. You know, there's this point where when we have this supernatural spiritual prayer, I mean, I don't know about you. Hopefully you've experienced this. If you're following my podcast, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. There's this point where you just really get intimate with the Spirit of God, and you're just overtaken. And, it, you know, you may weep. You may laugh. You, who knows? But you're going, to, you're going to have this encounter with God to where you're in a deep spiritual relationship. And then, you know, when you come out, it's like wading out of that river of Ezekiel. It's like wading in and wading out whenever it's over. Okay, that's like when your prayer is over. But when we're wading in to Ezekiel's river, that's the way I look at it, 
we're thankful. We're thanking the Lord. And then as we start getting a little deeper into the river, we're starting to praise the Lord. And then we get all spiritual and stuff. It's going to be awesome. And then when the experience is over, we come back out. And as we were ministering the other day, um, on Saturday, we went to the flea market and we went to, uh, to the bus station. Amazing. And we were talking in the car and they're saying, well, gee, how come I don't remember all the stuff that we did? You know, there's something that happens when you're in the spirit, when you're walking after the spirit. Oftentimes people will say, you know, we prayed for a lot of people, but I don't really remember it. You know, I, I, I know I did. I remember parts of it. Well, it's kind of like a dream. I'm like, it's kind of like a dream, isn't it? So they'll go, yeah, it's kind of like a dream. Well, remember how many spiritual encounters are in the dreams of the Bible? You know, Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh, Joseph, Daniel. I mean, just think about the... And then you'll notice at the very last book of the Bible, um, John the Revelator, he takes a pen into his prayer time. He says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And he was writing all these things down. You know why? Because John, the the disciple who laid his head on the heart of Jesus, he knew about this spiritual encounter. He says, you know, I'm about to have something spiritual here. I'm going to take my pen because I know that I need to write it down pretty much as it happens. As the seven thunders uttered, he says, I was about to write. And the Spirit said, don't write this. You know, that's supposed to be, that's supposed to maintain its presence in the spirit. It's not ready to come into the physical world yet. So they, he wanted to keep that in the spirit, the heavenly realm. So John the Revelator knew to take his pen. This is why whenever we do some ministering at, you know, the bus station or the flea market, as soon as we're through, as soon as we, you know, you go in, you're entering their environment. Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire Japan was talking about, you know, you're taking the presence of God into someone else's environment. And that's true. That's what's happening. We're taking the the presence of God into someone else's environment. And when we start ministering, that's the key. You know, hopefully we're granting them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, Second Tim- Timothy chapter 2. We're in the Spirit at that point, and we're getting even deeper in the Spirit, and we don't even realize it. Jesus will say, take no thought beforehand what you're going to say. You know, he's talking about when you're being delivered up to be persecuted. But it's, he also says it will be the Spirit speaking through you at that moment. And oftentimes when we're ministering to people, at the bus station or wherever, it doesn't matter. When you're ministering to people, you get into the Spirit, and it's almost like you're just watching yourself talk. You're like, wow, that's God, you know? And the the words of knowledge flow forth. All this awesome stuff happens. And then when you come out, it's almost like a dream. So that's why right after, as soon as there's a little spot, I'll, I'll pull over. I'm like, okay, what did we learn from that experience? Because it's fresh. You know how when you wake up from a dream, you remember the dream at that moment. But the longer you go, the less you remember it. So it's good to talk about it and learn at that moment. So now knowing this, when you go out and you're doing ministry, you're going to go talk to someone, you're bringing the kingdom of heaven into their environment They weren't really looking for it, you know, but God had a divine appointment for them. Amen. Like Jesus showed up in the environment of of Saul as he was killing Christians. He inserted himself supernaturally into Saul's environment and changed his life. Jesus, when he met the woman at the well, he brought the kingdom of heaven to that well. He didn't pray for her or anything like that. He just said, you know, you've had five husbands. Then she gets so excited. She she had just been given a kingdom key. She runs to the town and then brings everybody to Jesus. So that's what happens when we do ministry. So now Matthew 7, talking about this straight gate, this straight gate, and then Psalm 100, talking about enter the gates of the Lord and enter his courts with praise. This is what happens when we do ministry. We like, thank you, Lord. Be, are we really thankful for the things that God has done for us? You know, I like to count my blessings. And then we enter his courts with praise. We get into the spirit. Then we take that into the world because there's few that are even seeking 
You know, he's saying, ask, seek, and knock. Then he says in Matthew seven fourteen, straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want to tell you something, people. There are few people even looking for the truth. They're not even looking for the truth. They don't know to look for it. The God of this world has blinded their mind. They're on the wide path, and they don't think there's anything better. This is why we need to take the kingdom to the people and show them a glimpse of heaven. Then after that, bring them to Jesus. All it takes is that one encounter that one kingdom key, then they're going to become seekers. You know, you can't just spell out the Roman road to everybody. You know, it's Stephen in, in Holy Jar, uh, HolyFireJapan.com, Stephen in Japan, you know, if he starts talking about the Roman road, they don't even know what he's talking about. You know, because they're in Japan. It's 1% Christian. I mean, he would have to spell everything out. But if you bring the kingdom of heaven to these people and they're touched with a healing, they're touched with a word of knowledge, all of a sudden they will become seekers. Only seekers find. So we need to bring the kingdom of God to someone and create a kingdom seeker because only kingdom seekers become kingdom finders. Amen. God is speaking. Isn't it awesome? I'm going to just tell you what, man. I'm so excited to be alive right now. I praise the Lord for this revival that's happening right now all over the planet. You got If you don't see the revival and you're following the rear ends of other sheep in front of you, it's time to lift your head and seek the good shepherd. Amen. God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, Please share this, and you might want to save it, because this is some good stuff, man. This is, uh, this is really good, amen? Contemplate, pray, and meditate on what God is talking about. Psalm 100, about the gate, and then Matthew 7, about the gate. Email me. Let me know if you're getting any revelation. We prophesy in part, amen? Conrad at conradrocks.net. That's my email, conrad at conradrocks.net. And I also will pray for you if you have a prayer request. God bless you. Thank you for being in my life. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at conradrocks.net.